Hi guys and welcome back to the channel and in this video I'm going to be building this 132nd P40. The kit offers three scheme options and being a 132nd kit as you would expect the plastic parts contain some nicely moulded detail. Protecting the clear parts this way is a nice touch from Trumpeter and the clear parts themselves are nicely finished. The Trumpeter include these photo etch parts with the kit but I'm also going to include these HGW seat belts, die cut masks for the clear parts and Eduard's photo etch interior detail set. And details for all these upgrades I'll pop in the video description below. So I'm going to build this model in dark earth and middle stone desert camouflage with South African Air Force markings. So I hope you enjoy the video, here we go. So straight into the cockpit and first thing to say is the level of detail they give you is really quite dire for this scale. So along with those Edouard detail sets I'm going to do a couple of other things just to bring it to life a little bit. These knife sharpening pads are perfect for cleaning up photo etch. And then the photo etch parts are folded either using this folding tool or most of the time they can be folded just by hand. Having removed any of the plastic detail that was getting in the way, the photo etch parts are glued to the plastic using a flexible CA glue. Now I'm going to paint over everything so I've masked off any of the label plates that are printed onto the photo etch parts. And after priming in black the whole interior is going to be painted with AK's field green. Some of the wiring harness detail is included using copper wire which is then painted black and I also use some cotton which I painted silver. I simulate some paint abrasion in and around the cockpit using AK aluminium. Up tie long sepia oil thinned with some white spirit was used to create the lever effect on the headrest.
So I need to credit Matt at Doog's Models for this next tip. And just applying a small amount of clear orange to the photo etch's stark white dials tones them down and adds to that realism. So with the cockpit nearly complete we turn to the seat. So this is the photo etch seat that comes with the interior kit for the P40M. But every photo reference I could find for a P40M had this seat. So I ended up just getting really confused and using whichever damn seat looked the best. Which in my opinion was this one with the curved back and the strengthening swages. And if it's wrong I'll just make up some plausible story that this seat was hoiked out of another aircraft. So onto the HGW seat belts, and I made a mistake by not getting the die cut ones and these are the ones you've actually got to cut out which is not the easiest thing to do. So these belts are kind of a fabric and once you've got them separated you're instructed to screw them up into a little ball in between your fingertips and then thread them through the loops of the photo etch provided. The seat belts and the seat are then glued into position using CA glue. I then make a small map to go in the map case on the right hand side of the pilot. So with the cockpit done, now onto the fuselage and the rest of the model. And one nice thing to note is that the exhausts can be painted individually and then fitted once the whole model is painted at the end. And once any of the necessary interior parts are painted, the two fuselage halves can be glued together. Any slight step in a seam can be sorted out using a new scalpel blade. Then I progressively sanded the seam from 600 through 1000, finishing with 1500 sanding block. For any small gaps apparent in the seam, I fill using Mr Hobby dissolved putty.
The wings required some upward pressure to close up the gap and glue the wing root. So now onto the front windshield section of the canopy. And for some reason Trumpeter make you glue the glass directly onto the fuselage with no frame below it. And looking at the aircraft you can kind of see why they did it. But I would think a better solution would be much like the new Tamiya kits is to make the whole front section a clear part. And then you're not gluing clear plastic onto a seam that's never going to be painted over. My solution was to leave a slight gap at the bottom of the mask on the clear plastic, glue the canopy down with extra thin and then fill the seam. It didn't help that the part was actually not a great fit and it did need the power of the extra thin to actually hold it into position. And I did lift the masking in a couple of places just to ensure that what I was doing would look okay. And once that was complete I rescribed the panel lines and remarked the rivets. The wall of the gun barrels looked a bit heavy, so I opened them up with a drill. So the rear glass was a much better fit, so I tried my luck with some humble clear fix.
And now we're ready for priming. So after cleaning with some isopropyl alcohol, the whole model is sprayed with a thin coat of Mr. Surfacer 1500 Black. Now once this black primer base is laid down, I take a white and start individually highlighting each panel. I create a very rough gradient effect with the heaviest highlight at the top of each panel. My hope was that this would not only give the panels some more visual shape, but would also simulate some of the sun bleaching that can occur in a desert environment. Before tackling the colour on the top surface of the model, I move to the underside. And after highlighting the individual panels and leaving a dark line between them, I blend the effect using the same colour until I'm satisfied with the contrast. I then add some white to the mix and create a mottling effect using an airbrush stencil. And again toning down and unifying the effect with the base colour. So back up top, now there's so much colour variation between the same paint colour from different manufacturers and I figured why not use them both to create a much more interesting effect. So I picked the Mr Hobby colours as the two I wanted to be the most dominant colour and I used the AK which is a much more vivid brighter look as a kind of underlayer that will add some spark to the more drab Mr Colour paint. Taking the AK Real Colour, I started off by applying the paint to the black areas, softening their effect. I then gave the whole panel a unifying layer, leaving quite a bit of the black and white contrasting underneath. I then took the Mr Hobby which is the colour I want to be most prevalent and I basically very lightly went over any area that looked too light or too dark while leaving any areas that looked fairly flat and at the same time being careful not to lose any of that undershading. and then the same process was repeated with the dark earth. I'm going to use a Cricut machine to cut the stencils for the markings. The fonts for World War II military text can be downloaded and I'll put the link for them in the description. After inserting the roundel images and text into the Cricut software, I'll have the machine cut them onto a sheet of Tamiya masking paper.
the masking paper is positioned onto the model, then the colours are sprayed light to dark using a white base for the yellow. I use masking fluid to ensure there's no bleed through into the previous layers. Obviously spraying blue over yellow will go green and what I should have done is neutralise the yellow with white first. I then seal all the work so far with a GX100 gloss varnish. To pick out panel line and rivet detail, a wash was made using up Tai Lung's sepia and their fast dry thinner. This was left for a few minutes to dry before wiping clean with a soft cloth. After leaving for at least a day to dry, the whole thing was sealed in with a coat of matte varnish. Unfortunately the rear window panels came off while unmasking. Humble clear fix isn't too strong, especially when you have to use it in such small amounts. But we'll sort this out later. 
I'm going to use AK Real Color Aluminium to simulate scratch and wear marks to the paint and this paint is perfect for the job. It dries fairly quickly on the brush but I find drier and slightly tacky paint is easier to create a believable effect. Sometimes you need to work the paint off the brush more but the results are pretty good. If in any areas you feel you've maybe gone too far with the aluminium, you can use the same technique with the base colour to reverse the effect. I use up Tylung oil, heavily thinned with their Matte Effect thinner, to make dusty marks on the wings and the tops of the fuselage. A wash can always be adjusted by using a clean brush lightly moistened with thinner. Once this has dried, the effect can be fine-tuned with a clean cotton bud. After painting the exhaust manifolds, I airbrush a guide for the exhaust marks onto the fuselage sides. And the P40's exhaust staining follow a distinctive upward arc. I then use a combination of burnt sienna and carbon black pigments to create a subtle staining effect.
and finally securing them with Pigment Fixer. Oil leaks and streaks are added around the engine covers. Now onto the underside, and after adding some paint wear, the only thing to do was to find some reference photos and break out the oils. So most builds will have a fail and this is this one's. This is a formation light and I did not realise that it should not be included on a P40M. And because I didn't want to fill it and start sanding at this stage, as a compromise, I glued the clear lens in place, painted over it and brought the exhaust staining slightly lower to blend in the fresh paint. The seam down the rubber tyre was sanded off. This also gave the look of some wear to the tyre tread. Before painting, the rubber tyres were brushed off with some isopropyl alcohol, then dried off with an airbrush. I made some brake lines from copper wire and glued them to the landing gear struts.
The leading edges of the propeller blades were chipped using a soft sponge and then finalised with a brush. The blades were then given some wear and patina by using the same dust wash as we used on the model earlier. This was without doubt the scariest part of the build, but I needed to create a decent seat for the iron sights. So adding the last few bits and the model is done. While making this video, the channel is at nearly 25,000 subscribers, which is phenomenal considering this is only my 10th video, so a big thank you to you guys. That support, and along with your comments, whether they be complimentary or through criticism, is making me look at my modelling much closer, and in turn driving me to always make the next model better than the last. And for me, that's what it's all about. So I hope you've enjoyed the build of this South African P40. If you haven't already, it would be great if you subscribed to the channel. Here's the finished model, and see you next time.